Yeah, I've never really driven any any serious race car with a roof on it. It's always been Formula cars, and um, yeah, so it's I didn't really know what to expect either. I knew that'd be quick, and uh, it was it was fun. Yeah, I just I don't know. It's just I think learning as well, like learning something new, is always I've always found that exciting, whether it's a new sport or whatever. And even though it's a race car, it's still very different for me. So just getting a few laps to learn, like each lap you can feel you get a bit better and that's that's exciting. Yeah, I mean, that, at the end of the day, it's, I mean, it's a top level of racing, you know, so it's it's different, obviously, to formula cars, the, the, the speeds and the style of car, but it's still the top tier for, you know, tin top racing as, as we call it. So, um, I mean, just everything, the car control, I, I've always loved supercars for how close they, they race, you know, the bit of bumping and, and just, I don't know, having that judgment at that speed is, is pretty cool. Um, you know, with, with F1, we obviously we race close, but you don't really get as much touching because just the way the cars are built and they're a bit more, I guess, fragile, but for these guys still to be doing, you know, well over 200 Ks and be pushing bumpers, it's, it's good fun. Absolutely, I, um, I mean, as a kid, I, there's a lot of drivers who will say, oh yeah, I knew when I was seven that I was gonna be an F1 driver and I don't really believe that because at seven you don't really know what you're good at firstly and really what you want in life. Um, as a kid, I loved race cars. So my dream was to be able to race cars for a living. Um, and I was like, I mean, if I could race V8s in Australia and be like, yeah, basically making a living off racing and not have a real job, um, that would be awesome. So for sure, I would go to Barbagallo every, every year for the race. It was, I stated it as a kid, it was my favorite weekend of the year. So I would get all my mates along and um, no, I was, I was a fan. And somewhere along the way, obviously Europe came calling and, and then, you know, F, F1 was where it ended up. But um, yeah, no, I've, I followed all forms of motorsport, but certainly V8s. Normally you'd sit next to a driver and critique them a little bit. For me, it definitely wasn't the case there. It was watching his inputs and, and learning from the way he went about it. He was very kind on the machinery, um, obviously, so shifting uh, well and truly early and stuff like that, which was pre pretty nice of him. But to see the way he got in, went out and did laps with me in the car with him, and then he stepped it up every single lap, just crept up on the brake markers, changed his inputs to improve every single lap. And I mean, that's why he's the champion he is. And for me to sit next to him in the car and witness that firsthand was pretty special. Yeah, I had the chance to work with Dan a little bit, I think it was seven or eight years ago, and so I knew what he was like back then, and for me it was um, going to be an interesting day to see what Dan's like now after making it to the top in world motorsport and being there for, for a lot of years, you know, he's a dead set champion, so coming in today, he's very much as he was back then, you know, happy to laugh and joke and have a good time and uh, very respectful for the equipment and the people around, and so for us that makes a great day, and it's, it's fantastic to see what a, a great ambassador he is, not only for Castrol, but for Australia. You have to be obviously very quick with. Uh, things happen a lot quicker in an F1 than they do in a supercar and so it was very impressive to sit next to Dan in, in the supercar and watch how he reacts to the car moving around and, and just watch his inputs. I mean the car would start to slide a little bit and he was reacting to it well and truly before I would even, even think about it and so he's an absolute machine and almost like a robot inside the car and uh, you know from my point of view that was really great to witness. Every single lap he would just step it up a little bit in the braking everything to the point where I think he was very much on the limit of that car after five or six laps and everyone knows just how difficult to drive a supercar is so that's an absolute credit to him.